all these tiles. <coughs> Make sense? Yes. How people hear yeah, all that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So now the business begins. So first, what is hearing? I know when you do the basic start, when you start with the single plants, I normally take you through that and explain it. It's basically the interweaving of chantilly. And again, like when I train you, I like you not know, to know the theory and also know the practical. So that once you know the theory, you can mentally take it on. So interweaving, you're putting strands of hair through each other. That's interweaving. So that when I'm showing you how to do that, then you can quickly pick that up because you now you know what it is. So interweaving of strands of hair on a predetermined track, that is cornrows. Why is it predetermined? Because you created the track. That's why when people say, show me how to create designs, I say to you, once I show you how to do this cornrows, you can create designs once you know how to work with the cones. Okay? Now, sometimes people say, hair platinum, hair braiding, which one is which? They are interchangeable. They are the same. Yeah? And then hair braiding is a creative art, and it's practiced on the head. So if you see people who can do art on the wall, and you go, wow. You can do art on the head, and people will go, wow. Okay? Creatively designing intricate strands to form a style. That is what we do. And that's not what hairdressing does. They might create designs to sort of like hold hair in a bond or something, but we are creating designs on the scalp. So basically, for people to know that what we're doing is unique and important, we are just grooming hair, grooming. And what is grooming? Any ideas? Um, making hair look nice. Yeah, that's one. Grooming is the part of maintaining health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grooming. Grooming is basically you don't want this thing to look scattered. You don't want it to look messy. Mm -hmm. So you put it on in a nice defined form. And so when you hear of barbers, they groom hair because they cut the hair and they create a star. You see hairdressers, they can, you know, comb the hair, put in one design, and they go, wow, she's well-groomed. You heard people say she's well-groomed. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. We're grooming people's hair by putting in a form that she can walk out and feel good about herself. Mm -hmm. And you see the kids. That's why their moms will come and say, please, who oh my, it's like tidying. You're tidying somebody's look. That's what we do. So that's why it's normal. That's why it's general. That's why nobody should tell you it's an ethnic thing and you believe it. It's not ethnic. It's for everybody who's got hair. And that's why you can see even horses get groomed. And I've seen horses whose hair has been braided. And dogs as well. As long as it's got hair, it can be braided. Okay? So it's another form of grooming hair for beauty, for style, for growth. Just like the rest of them. Hairdressing, hair uh, cutting. Hair braiding is different from hairdressing. I, I, it is creating of designs and tidying away of hair on the head. Well, the other skills involve chemicals. We don't put chemicals. Oh, you okay? Okay? No, it's just writing stuff. Oh. <laughs> so, these are some ideas of how someone can artistically create designs. Can you see? It's all about thinking about it. So we're going to quickly look at the history of how our business is. You understand the scale in your hands. The rest is down to you to decide when you tell them. I mean, most of the time I finish explaining to my clients what hair is, no one's ever told me that. Oh, really? So by the time you're quoting what you want to quote, they know what you're talking about. So what is hair? And I'll just paraphrase, I'll just give a bit, but be curious about it, read more about it. Get to know what it is and why you're doing it and what the effect of what you're doing ha is having on it. Because mm -hmm. I've made a big deal of that. I, I, I understood that what I'm doing does not affect hair in any way damage you. And that's why when people turn and they go, oh, the braids I did was what damaged my hair. I said, could you tell me what your hair was like before you started braiding? And suddenly the language changes. Mm -hmm. Because if you've already messed up the hair with chemicals and then you come and braid it, that's like double jeopardy for the poor strand of hair. Mm. But they will not see the chemical side. The only one they saw was the braids and the wig and the rest of the things that go with it. Here's an offshoot of our skin. 
And so hair, nails, and skin, they come from one source. Each strand comes from a hole on our skin, and that hole is called the follicle. So if you look at your skin now, you see them, tiny, 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 tiny. If you look at it, you see like little bits coming out. Every strand comes from a follicle. And each strand of hair is made up of some chemical bonds. There's carbon, there's hydrogen, there's nitrogen, there's oxygen, there's sulfur. Then the question would then be, why do we have hair? Why, why was it necessary for us to have hair? Why? Because have you seen people without hair on their head? Mm -hmm. Are they dead? Is everybody without hair dead? Mm -hmm. No. So it's not important we must have hair. But we do have hair, and we make a big deal of hair. We have hair mostly for warmth. That's why hair was put on our body and on our scalp for warmth, to protect us from the weather. And the most visible one that everyone notices is the one on our head. But in the meantime, there's hair on every part of our body, apart from our lips and our arms, and then of course our 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 leg underneath it. Everywhere else has got hair. And it's made from a protein called keratin. This is found in the cortex of the hair shaft, which I'll show you. If you died, would your hair still be better with the keratin? Hair just drops out. Do you know why? Because it's fed from within. So we'll get to that. I'll tell you how they come up. So, um, extensions. When you see an extension in color, you see an extension in black, you see the one that's color is really dry. Because it goes through a lot of processes. In order to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's just for you to have an idea of what you're dealing with and for you to understand how you're doing what you're doing and how that affects what's happening. Okay? So, hair grows, these are some facts about hair. Hair grows 1.2 centimeter in a month. contains over 100,000 strands of hair. Have you thought of it that way? That's a lot of hair. And that's amazing because our God knows every strand of hair on our head, isn't it? Yeah. If someone said to you, oh, I had this wig and everything, and then all this hair was coming out, could you just be like, because naturally on a day you lose a hundred hair, so because it's been, could you say that? No. Okay. I, will, I will explain what happens okay. next. Look at my grandma. Who wrote that? That's not me. <laughs> we lose. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, so we lose between 40. Oh, come on. That's not what I want to do. We lose between 40 to 100 strands of hair every day. Okay. Yeah? Did you think of that? Mm -hmm. So it's a natural thing, like Francesca is saying, that hair should drop off. Why? Because like, the hair has a life cycle. So there's a new hair coming up, a baby hair growing. There's an, uh, uh, an old hair, like an adult hair that's been sitting there, and there's one that's dropping off. It's just like the human being. Mm -hmm. We're born, we become adults, then we grow old and we die. Hair goes through that cycle. Yeah? But that's not going too deep into it. So I won't bother. It's called, um, the anagen is the new one, the keto... At, catogen and telogen. Telogen is when it drops off, catogen is when it's adult, and... Anagen is a new baby one. And hair is the weakest, weakest when it's wet. So that's why when you your hair is wet, they say be careful when you comb it. Mm -hmm. Because some people have this habit of just yanking it through and yanking it through. You, you, you lose hair a lot at that stage. Because if you pull it too hard, then they're dropping out. Because they're weak. Why? Because the hydrogen bond is broken at that stage. Okay. So... What is good hair? Good hair is hair that is shiny and, and, and has lustre. It is smooth. Why is it smooth? Because that cuticle, remember the cuticle, um, what is it called? The, the one that's like the scale? That is always closed. When that is closed, that hair is good. When you hear a porous hair, that is open. Okay? So the trick is, you aim to have your hair looking smooth all the time. And do you know the people that 
really have mostly good hair? The Asians. Their type of hair is always closed. And that's why it's hard to color Asian hair. He would never take color. Very hard to take color. Why? Because the cuticle so, layer is always closed. Tightly packed. That's good hair. And when the hair is tightly packed, it's shiny. That's good hair. Because the oil that comes from the sebaceous gland, the sebum, it goes through the strand and it leaves it looking all nice and glossy. Now, the mini hair is porous, that is damaged hair. Just think the opposite of good is bad. Yes? That's what happens. So, hair that the critical layer is always closed, that hair can stretch between 25% of its original length. Stretch! Elasticity of hair, that's what they call it, is elastic. It means you can pull it and it will drop back. Now, when you pull hair, it just snaps. That is bad hair. So when you try to press on this hair and you try to comb it and the hair is like dropping off, oh no, this hair is not healthy. You can chat with them about it. And that is another issue that becomes moisture. Because the mini hair loss is moisture. Again, natural in hair. Again, there's nice oil. It's a shampoo. And that's the best product for, for, for shampoo. I mean for dandruff. Then there are people whose issues is their hair is not growing. We've talked about hair growing a lot today. So hair growth, there are, there are vitamins that sort of contain the natural ingredients we need. Remember you asked, how do you yeah. handle vitamins? There are some. And you have to deal with the healthy ones. But the question again is usually how many do you take to know that you haven't taken too much or too little. Uh, thinning hair. Remember what we talked about? Thinning hair is like this person's hair is really fine. How do I handle that? Do grow. They are quite good with that. There is an the anti-thinning shampoo and conditioner. And I've seen a client say that was really fine. And she used it and it became thick. I don't know how that works, but it did work. And then there is the natural um, afro hair products. Again, there are loads of them. The organic foods, egg marinade is very good. Carrot oil is good, cream of nature. So you will be dealing with products that help natural hair. If that's not the areas you're in. And these are some of the products again, same products we just mentioned earlier. So what I'm gonna do when we go on break, I'll just put them on the table. So when we come back, we can look at them. Yes. And on that stage, we're going to take a break.